cold turkey might be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. I'm talking about my sponsor, Fume, and they look at the problem in a different way. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses all natural flavors. Instead of bad, Fume is good. It's a habit that you can feel free to enjoy and it makes replacing your bad habit easy. It fills the void in a natural, guilt-free way. Your Fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and it's designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting. It gives your fingers lots to do, which is great for de-stressing. My favorite flavor is crisp mint. Fume is flavorful and it feels fresh. Fume has served over 150,000 customers and has thousands of success stories. There's no reason that that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com slash chale or scan the QR code. Just make sure you use the code CHAIL to get 10% off. You ever meet somebody in life where rules don't apply? Have you ever met anybody like that? You know a guy or you see a guy? My father was a horseman. And in horse racing, there's something called a claim race, and they're almost all claim races. From the, the huge ones on TV to the small ones at your local fair. Not all of them, but almost all of them. What that term means if you're not familiar, if you race your horse and it's a claim race, which most of them are, your horse can be claimed. You have no, no say in it. If you enter your horse in the race, another guy can come in and buy your horse. Now it'll, it'll have a fee. Like it'll say claim race, $5,000. Claim race, $25,000. Which means with no negotiation and no talking, as a matter of fact, you don't even have to meet. The guy looking to claim your horse can come in with the paperwork. When you put your horse in the stall, you kiss him and you tell your horse, good luck and I love you and I'll see you tonight, champ. You will never see that horse again. That paperwork goes through and those funds are good. That claim will take place. The horse is gone. My dad got a call one time from a trainer named Tex Irwin. Tex knew horses. Tex told my father, you must claim this horse tomorrow and you must bring him to me. Only I know how to train him. My dad said, you, you really got a secret to train this horse? He said, I got a secret to train this horse. And my dad didn't have the money. So he took my mother's car and he sold my mother's car, which got him $1,500. And then he did have the money. It was a $5,000 claim. He could have $3,500. That's how he came up with the other $1,500. And that horse won its next five in a row which tied the track record. It lost a photo finish for its sixth in a row, which would have made the record. It came back right after that and won its next two in a row. Somebody else claimed it away. That horse never won again. When it got claimed away, they took it from Tex. So the secret, my father asked him, Tex, what is the secret? And the secret is on that horse, whose name is Sunvest, is he doesn't like to work. So you don't get the, the horses up in the morning, you go work them on the track, it's called, you take them one lap, hose them off, cool them down, feed them, and they're good. Do that a couple, couple, three times, four times a month. That's how you train a horse. Well, Tex said, no, don't do that with him. Take Sunvest out there, pay your track fee, do the whole bit, and then walk him. Let him see the track. And he told my dad, he said, he said, Pat, I swear to goodness, this horse can remember landmarks. This horse is like a dog. He can get back to places he's been. I said, I never seen anything like him, but just walk him. He didn't like to work. Keep him as fresh as you can. And when Saturday rolls around, he'll run like hell. And unlike the other horses, he'll know where he's at. Okay, this is silly. The horse can't do any of those things. There's, there's no horse that can do any of that. You get these guys that tell you that pigs know math and chickens know math. And you go to YouTube and it sure looks like they do, but it's just, they don't. But it's what Tex believe. And my dad believed in Tex. And sure enough, that horse knew that track, or at least it appeared. He would have photo finishes, and the other horses would be running, and there's the finish line. They take him up. And our horse, Sunvest, would be reaching his neck out to get his nose across the line. You look at the picture and go, my God, he knew where the finish line was. He is literally extending to win. It was everything that Tex claimed. So the rules just didn't apply. I mean, weren't you supposed to work harder? The harder you work, the better result you get. You've been told that your whole life, too, by the way. 
If you want to make money and you want to be successful, like there is a matrix that's set up. There's a way that you do that. There's no matrix that takes you anywhere that gets you less than a high school education. Now, after high school, there is some options. You can go into the trades or you can go into, and then they're all going to talk to you about a 401k and they're all going to sit money aside. And then the, the people that have it are going to tell the other people, you guys, you should have been smarter. You should have worked harder. You start looking at that guy and you go, God, I know that. I've been told that my whole life, but I've never seen you read a book. I mean, you keep telling me about being smart, and I, tr I trust that you are. You've got, you've got more than I do, but I've never seen you read a book. I read them all the time. And come to think of it, I'm dirty and sweaty every day when I come home. You're wearing a sweater, and your car is spotless. What do you mean I got to work hard? Pretty soon you get a little bit older, you start looking around, you start seeing these guys that aren't working as hard are the ones making all the money. So you say, well, how does that work? I was told from day one from everybody I believed I've got to work hard and i got to be smart. I went and got smart and I work real hard. Now, the other side of it is I work so hard that when I'm done at work, I, I can't keep working. Because I'm tired. I've got to recover until the next day. And it's that in-between time that seems to be making these guys and the 401ks and the markets all the understanding and buying a call and selling a put and to even find out what that is. Okay. Max Holloway it turns out, is a little bit like that horse sun vest. It turns out that some of the rules and principles don't completely follow Max. And the first time I observed this, was Max getting ready to take on Cater? It was during COVID. Was that the Cater fight though? That's the part I think I might be changing. Max, during COVID, I don't know why it shut down. A lot of people broke those rules. A lot of you guys broke those rules. A lot of fighters that were training saw they didn't have a choice, but where Max was in Hawaii, where the laws were stronger, or the respect of it was greater, Max locked down. And he didn't have his coach holding mitts for him, pushing him, timing those mile runs, making sure twice a day, every day, making sure in between he's eating these right foods and he's getting rest and he's doing rehabilitation and preventive care and all these things that you hear about. He didn't have the workout partners. I can't even explain to you in words any other way. The, the most simple that I know how to speak, if you want to be in fight shape, you have to fight. I mean, you'll get people that'll convince you you need to be on a stair step or you need to do wind sprints. They're like, these things are good and helpful, but use any sport. If you want to be in shape to wrestle, you have to wrestle. It doesn't matter how many sprints you do. It won't get you there. So when you find out that Max isn't doing that, Max is not fighting. He can't. He's in his garage. No one's there. Okay, great. But, but by basic logic, we now know that Max will not be in better shape. We now know that he won't have new skills. And he was young enough, he was in that age right? he was young enough that it might not regress. Like an older athlete, oh man, he's almost starting over at scratch. He, he takes two months off, took some pictures with his shirt off, you won't even recognize him, he looks so fat and out of shape. That's an older athlete. And it will take him a period of time that he can get everything back and some. But for a younger athlete, he can take some time off, look just the same, be just as quick. But we know he can't get better, right? Can we agree on that? Okay. So we know Max isn't going to have his best fight. He's not going to look his best. But the reason it's still fair, the reason it's equal, is his opponent, at least in theory, is in the same spot. So Max goes out, and it was the most dangerous Max has ever looked. In fact, it wasn't the cater fight because Max finished it, and he, he was doing this spin kick right to the guy's head. And Max had put something in his garage where he's training on his own. It's probably just a bag, but he had put something in his garage. And then he like taught himself the spin kick. So then he'd go in the garage, this thing, whatever, and he'd, he'd do the spin kick. You can't learn a move that way, or at least you can't perfect it. You, you can't have confidence in it, might be the best way to say it. You, you would never believe that's going to work. Like the things that you're going to use on the octagon, you learned them 10 years ago. Your entire training camp, it, it's just because your trainer told you you needed that. It, it wasn't because you're actually going to learn anything. Like every drill and every step you did, you will use none of it in your fight. You can't. 
You, you have to use the, right? You're, you're in a fight. The house is on fire. This isn't make believe. This is real. You will have at a maximum three techniques. A maximum, you'll have three. Of the three, you might not use all three. But there's no scenario, and you guys go back, watch any fight you want. There's no scenario where a guy uses four moves. No, where he uses eight moves. And I, I'm only sharing with you, you had to have learned it 10 years ago to have any confidence with it. Right, the things that Max did to Justin Gaethje, just for example, but Max learned those when he was a sophomore in high school. So, my point, this little spin kick that Max is working on with nobody, because nobody's there. He will never use that in competition because he has no faith in it. He has no faith in it because he hasn't done it in practice yet. Well, sure enough, he did use it. It was a brand new tool. It's a brand new weapon that he taught himself. And he used it very well. I mean, I'm going back to the times of COVID. Oh, by the way, Max won the fight by out-pushing the opponent. Well, how did he do that? How? How could he be in better shape? How could he outpush the guy? He's got no trainers, he's got no partners. He's in his garage. How did he get better by doing less? I don't have the answer for you. I don't know. I don't know how my dad's horse sun vest walked when everybody else worked and he won all the races. I don't know. I don't. But when I watch Max against Gaethje, okay, the, the one thing you will not do when you're the smaller guy. Now, the hardest guy to fight, it's the same guy that's the hardest guy to wrestle. It's the guy from one weight class underneath you. That will always be the hardest guy because you're not big enough to use it. But because you are bigger, you're going to be a little bit slower, even if it's a tiny, and you're going to get tired a little bit faster, even if it's tiny, even if it's minuscule, but we're playing a game of inches. So the hardest guy to go with is one weight class under you. But one thing you won't have to worry about is being knocked out. Because while he brings that shape and that conditioning and some of that speed, he does not bring that power. So if you're not getting knocked out by guys your size, you're not getting knocked out by a guy smaller than you. These are rules, but they're not rules that Max followed. And it's like so many other things that Max does. Don't copy it, guys. Don't go read this stuff and start staying home. Okay? <laughs> Don't stop listening to your coaches. Don't stop putting that extra time in. The first words of every loser in sport, the first sign that this career is over, is when the fight, and somebody else tells the fight and convinces, somebody else convinces the fighter, and the fighter believes it, and he comes out and tells you all. And if this ever happens, tear your ticket up because you're not going to the pay window. I am learning, and I am working harder. I apologize. My favorite one. I'm working smarter, not harder. If you trace that statement back, you will not then show me an athlete that had success. You will not show me an athlete that had better success. You might show me a guy that won. He might show me a champion and he kept winning, but he won't have better. If he was number three at the time he used that statement, you'll never show me a time where he moved to two or one. It is the beginning of the end. And when you have somebody that works as hard as Max that has that kind of output, now he's got this kind of power, now he's learning things on his own, he's doing it on his own in the garage. What you're dealing with is one of these Bruce Lees, one of these Hicks and Gracie. You're, you're dealing with the guys that come around every 30 years that innovate the sport for no other reason than they cared, they were passionate, and they understood it better than anyone else. They were born that way. It was their gift. It's like goodwill hunting. Like you was handed something. And they were handed an understanding. Max knew he could have punched Justin Gaethje in the head and hurt him. So he hit him three times in the body, hurt his body, then he hit him in the head. That might sound simple to you, but everybody else on the card knew it too, and none of them did it. Justin Gaethje knew it, he didn't do it. Max's understanding is different because the rules don't apply to him.